Uh, we have so many good games and so many good, interesting adjustments to those games. But first things first, we got to tell you who's playing this evening, because I'm sure you're sitting at home wondering, why are we watching this? Who's actually playing? We have two insanely strong teams. We've got the Smilers on the left-hand side that's going to be Moonfares as the captain of that team. Liam is going to be in there, as well as Lake Flu, Alora, and Tim from Heroes of Fitness. On the right-hand side, we got the Turkish Delights. We're going to be having Turk as the leader on that one. we got Leon Black over there, as well as Trixler, Kyberries, and Mockery. On our first game tonight, our restriction is going to be you guys have to draft the game name one at a time. All right. So what does that mean? That means that if team one drafts a tank first pick, team two must draft a tank and then follow that with whatever you want off lane support. The following team goes support, ranged assassin. The next team has to draft range, maybe a second range to range assassin, off lane, off lane. Okay. If that makes okay. sense. We Let's have the draft. I push the button. We can get into this. But Towers of Doom, as I was saying, it is one of my favorite maps for a game number of three, five, seven, the end of your series. But it still is a great way to open up our best of seven series because it's anyone's map. And that's the one thing that I like about it the most is that you have these opportunities where, I mean, I can't tell you how many games, it's, you know, it's 24 to four and you still have that team with four core health pulling it back to a four to four boss rusher. You know, it comes down to one final bell tower. So I love Towers of Doom for that fact. But Mac, what do you what do you prioritize band wise uh, coming into Towers of Doom map specifically? You definitely want to look for those. Uh, you know, you could you could you could really even force your opponent in the off lane, maybe in a bad matchup if you were to ban something like. Hey guys, what's going on? Oh, we got we're wondering. Um, are we going to continue to random the first picks, or are we just alternating from here on out? Alternating. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So Easy enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I yeah. thank God you did. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah. They're actually going to ban out the Malganus, but sorry, you were making a point. because Yeah, so we, I, okay, or we do this way and we just ban the URL. I was going to say, you know, you could look to ban out a specific lane and know that if you take a certain character, like as a second pick, especially in the off lane, you know that if the other team takes their off laner, you get to kind of counter pick it. Um, so putting them on a back foot or, or in some sort of matchup like that could be good. Or just banning out the kind of characters that are, are going to be more exploitable, like a Deathwing, right? If you yeah. have to take an off laner um, after Deathwing is taken, and maybe it's a last pick Deathwing, then there's going to be no way to counter pick it. So um, it'll be interesting. It looks like here it's just a lot of comfort bans. You know, the URL obviously against Liam after such a good season one, and then Malganus and Deathwing, both characters that are a bit annoying to deal with. Um, so uh, it, again, I think the most important thing and where it'll get interesting is this first pick. Like, what do they make the te the other team pick first, right? I feel like As it's a Joanna. Oh, oh so, okay, so, we go, so we go ranged. Real quick, uh, shout out to Totsky for the raid. Welcome everyone from Totsky stream. We are getting into game one of our best of seven show match this evening. So you're just in time. And so thank you so much to that dark horse for bringing her friends over here. But ranged assassin on the side of Turkish delight. I. This is oh, one at a time too. So this is a we're we're doing game we're doing fun games one at a time. A ranged assassin has been taken. So now a ranged assassin plus another role has to be taken here. So we we so we have <laughs> so we have a nice beautiful tracer Malfurion, pretty standard mockery, a very comfort pick for him. And now the support has been chosen. So from the Smilers side, they will have to take a support here and then they'll open up with either a tank, an off lane, or maybe even a melee assassin. Just just to update everyone on, on stream really quickly, I noticed this. Uh, we do have the names backwards. We're getting that fixed really, really quickly. It is oh. going to be the Smilers on the left and Turkish Delights on the right. Yeah. So cool. uh, that will be that Malfurion uh, Tracer on the right. There's going to be a Medivh and a Brightwing. So I love this. I love this so much. They're actually going to be picking. So, so they're forcing them specialist. into a support role. They're forcing uh, yeah. them into that support role. Yeah, yeah. Is, is, so he, like he's Abathur. support, right? Abathur, uh, uh, Medivh is a support. Abathur okay. is a support. You have Lost Vikings are a support. I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm blanking because I, I honestly, I, I can't think of many off the top of my head. I think, I think there's more than three. <laughs> I, I honestly think there's more. Yeah, yeah. Tass, Viking, Ava, maybe? Oh, Tassadar, Tassadar as well. I do believe yeah. they fall into the support role. So, I, I mean, hey, here's the thing. They actually- Wait a second, they, has, I, please, unless, Moon's unless team unless has they ban to, out, wait, they, they have ban to ban Tass, please. Okay. okay. They realized it Turk too. Turk still has probably... Vikings though. Wait, this is, this could get, Turk still has Vikings, right? It's a good map uh, for him too. Yeah. It's a very oh, good map for them. No. Oh, I, I would love the idea of a, like, 
Tracer Malfurion running around getting kills, and then you have Lost Vikings just soaking. Like, you need to have uh, some hyper push, but they still have to take. So they go tank. Oh, Zarya. Oh, Zarya. Forgot about this that. Is, this is all on Tracer. So, this tank, is so, so now it's carry. so now it's tank plus whatever roll. Uh, and again, we did they... allow. We did allow. Like they could have technically gone no support. It was. It, 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 I mm -hmm. didn't really want them to, but technically they could have forced the other team to do a no support comp. Um, they're having fun with it. They're, 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 but they're, yeah, this is this, this is comps. coming together. Yeah. So we do have. We, we obviously we need a tank, and then we'll see where the, where they put them if they put them on a bruiser, a melee assassin. Okay, so they so they've gone bruiser. I think the artist. I, I love. No, 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 no. The deep support. He's... <laughs> Anyways, all right, so Arthas, I actually really like, I really like the Arthas here. The, the teams are trying to figure out... Is that out a tank, what's... right? That's a tank or is that a bruiser? Arthas? Yeah. I believe he's a tank. I don't believe he's a bruiser. Something... Okay, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. <laughs> this is exactly how the comp should have come together. It all it all rounds out exactly kind of how we expected. Wait, but I want to talk about wait, no, wait, wait, no, wait. Time out. DQ. Oh. Yeah, yes. So the Vikings pick. Okay, so that's that's where the confusion came in. And and honestly, I, I guess that's that's kind of that's kind of the b b belly of the beast here. Uh, they couldn't take a second support, right? The support Viking needed to be a fourth pick. The Viking needed to be fourth picked. Arthas is a tank as well. Yes, do, Arthas do, is a tank. If you if you do highlight into bruisers, they do not they do not. And then up. last pick needs to be a tank for Turkish. Hey, yeah. what yeah. happened? Did I fuck it up or uh, <laughs> what happened? Okay, so the Vikings needed to be a fourth. Pick. The Vikings is a support character, right? Is it? Yeah, he's, <laughs> so, Vikings are classified as support. Yeah. Oh, are we going off of those classifications? Is yes, that it? Yes, yes, at the top okay. of the screen. This yeah, is what that was not, that was not relayed to me. Cigarette. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's okay, not yeah. cigarette. I just yeah, had to no. pee. <laughs> I had to pee. But it had to be outside. It's a so, condition. Okay. Uh, a lot of men have it. Uh, <laughs> so, so here's the deal, Turk. You either, at least you either lose, lose, the, lose the Zarya, keep Vikings, and take a tank, okay? Or you keep Zarya and take a tank. I'm going to need a repeat. One more time. Okay, you either keep the Zarya, take a tank, or instead of TLV, or go TLV and take a tank. Yep. Got it. All right, I will relay this back to them, and we'll see. Right? Perfect. Yep. 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 <laughs> All right. I do not think we need a full draft for this. We don't. We do not. We do not. So we're just gonna be doing one of these numbers. Yep. And so once everyone gets everything <laughs> figured out here, so it looks like. What do they end up swapping for? Because we, well, I can see it on the right hand side bar. Um, I'm waiting to see what the swap off. They probably have to still explain each other and figure out what they're gonna go for. Uh, realistically, though, what what would you actually swap out? Would you I mean, get rid of the I'll Zarya, be honest. Would you get rid of the I, Lost Vikings? I'll be honest. I I actually okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah hold on. I need, I need to pull Moon in here. I need to pull Moon in here because I, I I'm messing up here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they have to play Zarya, man. Yeah, Zarya. I'm here again. I'm here again. They have to All play right. Zarya plus tank. They have to because, to be honest, this draft was drafted around the fact that the Zarya existed, and I and and I only know that because I see Arthas standing in the middle of my screen, uh, and that is a complete counterpick to the Zarya. Right? They've taken the Arthas to run the Zarya down, um, and now a tank has to be taken. So it just has to be Zarya plus tank. Well, once we do have a DC here, we will yeah, play once... a game of Heroes of the Storm, guys. It will happen. Uh, what's going on? Are there any crazy new rules? Yeah, essentially the way that this was working, uh, the intention was is that uh, if Team 1 or the Smilers draft a tank to start things out, the opposing team has to match that 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 role. So if the first pick was a bruiser, the enemy team has to pick up a bruiser. In this case, it was a ranged assassin, so they picked up a tracer, but then they also picked up a Malfurion, which means that the opposing side, when it came back to them, had to pick up a healer. And then they picked up a third roll. They went to a ban phase, and then it just kind of swapped back and forth, still back and forth. I know, I know, it's a little bit. Uh, sorry, we're just okay. We actually legit lost someone from. The we, party, yeah, uh, so we, we do have a DC. We do have a DC. So we're waiting now on team two to give us a tank pick. 
So we made some interesting rules this evening. It's uh, <laughs> we're just we're just trying to get this. The is, this is why I have the nose on. This is why I have the nose on. Mm-hmm. I I knew that the circus would go on, as they always say. So we're we're gonna the, the show must go on. So regardless of these hiccups, we have an ETC pick. Perfect. All right. So the comps are in. We look like we're ready to go. The lobby is filled. Everyone's ready. Already. We're gonna hit an all R. Okay. This is good. This is right. ETC Anub. Oh, Zarya. Sorry, Zarya. Sorry. They need Zarya, right? Zarya. Not nah, Viking. Yeah, Life has got it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got we got crazy drafts, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if I like that. Lowers the possibility of crazy drafts. I mean it I think it completely changes it makes it a crazy <laughs> look draft. how look how mind these they, 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 <laughs> they don't even know what they can't even figure it out themselves, even though there's a button at the top of the screen that you hit and it shows the characters that you can take. That's how it, it's a it's a game changer. Here we go. All right. So we might actually get to see. OK, yeah, we're going. So we have to turn buttons <laughs> on Zarya right here, right now. You know, we th- OK, I think they thought we thought everyone thought that that Viking was definitely going to get picked right with the Medivh. Yeah, absolutely. And then I think that's where the big brain was like, hey, let's take that other character that shields that's not Tassadar because they banned it, and let's take Zarya. And this is where those rules that I implemented come in and punish because they've now given up that support pick that they could have had to be the Viking, right? And that's where the confusion has come in, but it looks like the teams have figured it out. And I mean, honestly, these comps are looking kind of juicy for Towers of Doom. Oh, I think, honest to God, they're they're all well-rounded compositions. They work really well. And there's also a lot of good synergies, and and there's also I, the one thing that I wanted to talk about, but we had a bunch of DC issues. Is Arthas mm-hmm. into Tracer? That was a really smart pickup coming out from them. But we can talk about that as the game progresses, because we're in game number one on the left hand side. We got the members of the Smilers. We're going to be seeing Big Scoop on the Arthas. We've got Vesper on the Joanna. Alora will be on the Lunara. Lakefu on that Brightwing, and we've got the Crowing, Medivh being played by Moon there. And looking at the, the classic Turk. Gish Delights, we have Mokri on Tracer, Kai on Malfurion, Trixler is going to be on ETC, Turk on the Zarya, and Leon Black on the Anubarak. A lot of engage on this side, a lot of CC too, honestly. Mm-hmm. Three, yeah, like they, they can they can dive in with the ETC, they can dive in with the Anubarak as well, Tracer can come in and throw a lot of damage, the shielding from the Zarya is going to be a ton, like I think they're going to have a rough go here on the side of the Smilers, but Mediv also does have that protection as yeah, well. That's... So- that's, that's going to be that's the, gotta be a winning, the, the, the deciding factor here, right? Uh, mm-hmm. How well our moon's shield's going to be uh, against the tracer bombs. But we see here just a little bit of a scrap. I don't think either team is really under too much pressure. They're, they're both pretty chonky, uh, especially Turkish Blight side. Uh, but just a little bit of damage exchange here. Turk building up his energy as well. And Mockery obviously working towards his bomb. We have a little bit of Overwatch mechanic going on. But we do have a gank showing up here in the top lane. Putting some pressure on Trick, maybe. Just be able to slide out of there and just get out of there very safely. Yeah, I was looking at the minimap. I thought they were clumping up down oh, towards we are. the bottom lane. Big Scoop is going to be targeted right there. They do sidestep a lot of the damage coming out oh. from the new break. End up getting picked off. That'll be first blood in favor for the members of Turkish Delights. We see there that that little scrap happening in the middle lane really paying off as Mockery is able to have a bomb ready, um, even at as early as level two, right? Uh, on that first rotation from mid to the bottom, um, able to get ahead of him and punish there for Moon heading to the top lane as well. If he was there, he very easily could have saved him. So we'll see if uh, Smilers starts to stay a little more grouped here uh, and kind of protect himself from that tracer pressure in the early game. And I like this, I, I really like the camp call coming out from Turkish Delight immediately. They Right at the one minute mark, they're already on it. Medivh is going to scout this out, so they do have vision, and they can see that they're on this. Doesn't look like they're going to be coming in for an invade. Kai Bear is actually throwing a root into the bush in case anyone was going to invade. Really smart kind of zone potential coming out from them, because they see the Medivh, they're afraid of them stepping up, as they're going to purposely take a lot of damage, trying to bait some abilities and bait some dive on, but it doesn't seem like it will pay off for the Turkish, or for the Smilers. They're not going to be able to find a kill just yet. As Liam, I just, or Vesper, is just yeah. casually double soaking on a Joanna right now <laughs> this is the the classic uh let's pick joanna and then we'll have wave clear right guys uh we see uh vespertine liam just 
doing a good job soaking mid, soaking top. He's pretty much under no threat here, even if, let's say, the Zarya and the ETC do get a hold of him. I mean, as Johnny just get to his pass and run away. But we do see Kai actually taking some damage here. The portal does come out. Moon looking for the body block. Is Arthas' root going to be able to connect? Moon taking a little bit of damage. Kai Berries is able to get out of there. Moon's actually getting turned on now. No shield, no portal. Will Vixku be able to get him out? The Brightwing heal does come out. It's going to be very close here. Mockery with the root. He will be able to recall out of there. Looks like both teams resetting here. And we're going to be on our, to our first shrine phase. There's actually a really, really cool mechanic that Moon was actually utilizing there because Tracer auto attacks the things, that, the things they have visible. They ended up stepping into the bushes. So they weren't taking auto attacks from Tracer. And if Tracer would have stepped into those bushes, they would have basically been stepping into Arthas. And that would have been auto attack speed reduction, potential mm. howling blast. So it was actually a really like, it was like a 200 IQ moment from Medivh just to keep themselves alive right there. But right now, I'm expecting this to be top left and right being traded out as typical. Turk might go for the poke on Immune just, just to harass them a little bit here. And uh, just peeking down over here towards the middle area, it looks like Leon should be able to get this channel uncontested i'm not able to do anything with that one right there's uh this is actually top left and right being poked at and we might we see brightwing should... dying too oh wait hold on yeah i was about to oh, say there no, there's no rotation my. coming out brightwing got body blocked right big there. scoop also looking like he's gonna go down here does connect the root there before he dies working towards that quest at level one that he's taken for the increased range and root aoe uh, but yeah and this top lane is gonna be very hard again for both sides honestly to to kind of push each other to a point where they must concede. I think the deciding factors here are definitely going to come down to the Tracer and the Medivh. So again, we're seeing Medivh not being there present where the Tracer is at, and she's able to bomb and kind of get out of control because um, the team is lacking mobility without it. Uh, Trick able to pick up the top right. We, we do see two for one trade here, so not terrible. I, I Here's the confusing part to me. There were three people showing on map in bottom lane and an ETC was, was gone. Like, I'm surprised they didn't try and invade to the right-hand side and grab that extra bell tower on yeah. the side of the Smilers, playing a little bit more passive right there, but they get a, Ooh, a nice massive root onto Leon Black, but the shielding will be good. Malfurion's healing will be just in time, and they're going to be able to just meander their way out of that one without taking any sort of death. It's going to be three kills up in favor for Turkish Delight as they have a solid level lead over the Smilers. I think as this game goes on, Smilers' team fight will definitely come to the top. I think they have a better team fight composition, but with Trixler on the ETC, and if he does opt to go into the stage dive, I think that that global pressure from that top lane and even the middle lane um, could really punish uh, in, the, in those later team fights. If he does get a big stage dive, maybe on a portal, even an aggressive portal, on when it's on CD, uh, he could just turn the fight, definitely. But we see here Alora actually getting caught out by the Anub knockup. Lakeview doing a great job to try to sustain her out, but they are going to end up picking her up. Um, working towards that level lead now, we are we are seeing an 8-9. to nine. And again, I mean, I'm going to continue to harp on it. You know, the Medivh up in that top lane, you know, they're doing, Turkish Delights is doing a very good job of seeing that window of opportunity and pressing those advantages. Well, they're going to try and finish out these Arcane Rift stacks. Uh, Moon's currently sitting at 38, and so that's why you're seeing them down here, just trying to throw as many of them out. They actually need one more. They should be able to finish it out right there onto Tracer, so they don't, no, they don't need to worry about potentially dying and losing those. They can play more aggressive, which is this is typically where you see a dynamic shift coming out from a team with Medivh, and Medivh no longer needs to worry about whether or not they're going to lose their stacks. They're like, if I die, maybe it's some tactical feeding, but here's the unfortunate part. This is going to be 10 talents here in a double ultra phase. I would say this is more or less in favor for Turkish Delights if they can actually press themselves on the left hand side of the map yeah they just really need to cork up that that that's side of the objective and and then from there they, they should have pretty good control over it i think smilers is actually missing that poke factor uh you see that with turk's pick actually on the zarya being able to particle grenade over and over and, and kind of keep them off of the objective actually we see allure here webbed up and we are going to have the ETC stage dive to really make sure that we get the kill. But the Medivh shield actually is a moon sliding into the knockup. Lord is going to be able to get out. Big Scoop doing a little bit of tanking. Leg food does get burrow charged. Slowed by the Arthas. Is Leon going to be able to survive as well? Everyone survives getting out pretty low health. But, oh, we see Moon actually portaling aggressively. Leon Dig should be back up here. Moon getting Z'd in by the Brightwing. Allura pressing up on here as well. We have 10 on both teams. Zarya coming down, Turk, just showing up, saying, what's up? I'm here, guys. Yeah, just just working through through some stacks as well. And Oh, wait, hold on. Another engage right here. Mocker taking a lot of damage. This will be a Howling Blast connecting onto Zarya. Big Scoop stepping further forward into them. Going to be having that self-barrier onto, onto themselves. But Big Scoop going to be hit with the uh, 
Oh my god, the expulsion zone is that's also going to be a leaping strike out from Alora. This is everything being used at once. All of the heroics um, at once are going to be popping out as the flesh shield comes out. They find another kill, and the members of the Smilers are putting some pressure onto the enemy side, but they respond to with that kill onto Medivh. Huge burrow charge coming out from Leon Black. They're going to web wrap the Joanna so that way they can step further forward into the enemy team. Lake Blue going to get the phase shift onto one of the friendly members. They're going to be able to get out of there as Alora gets the leaping strike to the far side. And I, I'll be honest, I did not expect this fight to go the way it did. Oh so my goodness. Maybe trying to get the pressure onto Mockery. Trickster slides out, doesn't find the stun, <laughs> and that's going to be the disengage of our very, very long fight that actually procs the next objective phase. Crazy to think that that fight started with Big Scoop at about 20% health, 10% mana, and somehow he comes out full health. He's, a, he's, he, he's, he's the healthiest out of everyone. A uh, nice shield from the Medivh, and yeah, great turnaround there. I think uh, a lot of the advantage came from Liam's early rotation, and, and a, a really good Bless shield from the side caught them offside. I uh, actually hear Turk also getting caught out as well, looking for the portal probably to catch him out, but we do have shrines on the bottom side of the map here, so the attention here, while it is good, if it is kind of pulling Vespertine away from his team. We see Big Scoop actually able to stop the channel here from Kyberries. There is a little bit of a scrap going on in the middle lane, a little 2v2 action, but as long as the Mediv is near the Tracer, I think we're very happy. And Turk is able to get out of there. And the channel for the altar going to... Oh, nope, Turk came back and died somehow. Uh, the channel does go to the bottom team on the altar. But we're going to see Liam is pretty much out of this fight here. Uh, so we have a nice 4v4 coming up for us. Just a little smile right at the end of that one as Big Scoop's going to be trying to put some pressure onto Leon Black. That is going to be an Emerald Wind out from the Brightwing. Stage dive coming out from Trickster into the back line. They're going to be focusing on the Moon Fairs, who does give the protection onto themselves. They end up getting picked off right there. There's a... Uh, I have no idea. Oh, there's a, a circle underneath them. I thought it was a Tracer Bomb or something. I didn't I didn't hear the uh, audio for it, but either way, that will be a Lunar going down the left-hand side of our screen as Kyberries is able to make it out with some 100 health. And now, bottom lane fort did go down. Oh, Sappers no. were pushing in down there, so that's going to be potentially five shots in favor for the members of Turkish Delight, as it looks like Liam needs to leave this bottom lane. Pulse Bomb Ooh. finds the kill. Percentage health Pulse Bomb. <laughs> Love to see it. Yeah, so the, the, the fort is down, and obviously as Towers of Doom goes, losing that bottom four is the biggest win condition that the map has, as it gives you so much control over both the bottom and middle shrine. Objective Lake Food here getting caught out as well maybe a nice emerald wind we look let's to see uh, a reset maybe we should jump into some comms here let's go in, let's go into the turkish alliance comms yep going on oh what is this this is something i want mana watch portal watch portal help guy i was she's all right she's all right lame was that probably bomb i'm backing up I have no idea where they're at. Uh, uh, they're all here. Yeah, it's gone. I'm looking at Joe, probably. I'm looking at Big Scoop. I'm looking at Big Scoop. He's looking at me, and I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. It sticks on me. Big Scoop super low in the back. There you go. Revenge. Look at Joe. Joe has no D. Joe has no D. Hang on, wait a second here. Leaping straight down. He's knocked back. Trying to body block him? Ah. Knock back. Oh, oh I didn't damage. think I'd die that fast. I didn't know Luna was Run there. <laughs> oh no. Damn. That's bad. Close, close. Ah, oh, that's only... Just one, as Kai says, uh, a, a, an, an incredible fight, honestly. Uh, that, that went both ways. You saw the retreat coming out from Turkish Delight, and then they, they recognized Trick even said, I'm not sure where they're at. And then Turk said, they're on me. We need to turn and fight. They recognized that the fight needed to happen, but you see the strength of that Arthas pick and, and the ability to run down the Malfurion. You know, if, if he gets on top of him, it's going to be a very hard time here. But we do have a Shrine phase happening. Yeah. Bottom board actually going down as well. The massive thing that I noticed during that team fight was the fact that Vesper actually got a huge flank into the enemy team as they were leaving through the objective phase, but a stage dive comes in from Trixler. Web wrap onto Allura in the bottom of our screen as this will be clear onto that. Anubarak Burrow charges in, not able to connect onto anyone. anyone or Emerald Wind does come out from Lake Fu as well. Vesper currently just casually 1v4ing as they're trying to finish out Subdue potentially here. Either way, they're going to continue to chase on in. Pulse Bomb goes on to Vesper. They're going to get a whole chunk of health off them. Bless Shield is ripped into them as well. Leon Black taking quite a bit of damage just to Burrow charge out. Allura trying to get that last little of damage. Meanwhile, they 
Oh no, Bakri doesn't chase out and get the last little bit of damage, and then below us, Trickster's actually zoning being away from their team, but also Tim is able to put some pressure onto them. Big scoop very far from the friendly team. That's going to be them going down, as this should be Bell Tower phase in favor for the members of the Dimension Lights. We'll see here if they, you know, get the Sapper camp and, and try to push for that bottom fort. Um, if if Smilers is able to hold, um, I think that that fight kind of started off and not near as well as the other one did, right? Where they they like you said, Liam was able to get that incredible side flank uh, and, and kind of get the fight going. We see actually Liam a little caught out here. No passive. Moonfair does decide to drop down. He is going to take a burrow charge. The stun knockup has come out with Leon, but he has no CDs left. So we might be able to put some pressure on the Leon Black. Kai getting a little put. Nice Emerald Wind coming out from Lakefoot, knocking Turk into the tower range. He is going to be tanking some of that up, but generating energy as well. Trick with the stage dive coming in. We are going to take Joanna down, webbed up the Allura. Here, Moon maybe having the Portal Mockery placing a lot of pressure here. Moon, great Polybomb does get out of there. Allura hopping her way. Potentially, no, nope. ETC says Bambi sit down. Cal is best. And we're going to see a two kill for nothing coming out from the Turkish Lights. We got a triple altar phase coming up here oh, next match. No. And it's five potential shots every single time. Or excuse me, five shots um, every single time yeah. they capture one of these. And uh, I mean, realistically, they could get two feed in sappers. They could get two get boss. Like they've got options here on the side of the Turkish Lights. And it's they've got 36 health as well. But this is Towers of Doom. This is, I won't say it every time, but or it happens every time. But this is the map where teams start to bring it back, and this is 11 to 36 might change very drastically, but this is Moon trying to evade onto a camp. It doesn't seem like it's going oh, no. very well for them as they end up staggering out of death just before the objective phase. This might be a more difficult phase for the members of the Smilers in game number one of our best of seven series. Yeah, I think I think overall the draft was creative. Um... You're just you're kind of seeing some of the cracks of it, right? Uh, whereas Turkish July has drafted a really, really resilient comp, uh, very tanky, very hard to kill. Uh, and then we see, you know, on Smiler's side, they, they're kind of lacking the damage, right? They have that slower damage coming out. Uh, we see a stage dive here on Liam. He is a little cut out. While Joanna is unstoppable and can't be CC, she can be body blocked. A nice sidestep here. Big Scoop also getting a little caught out here. He does have ghouls up. Nobody to get him out. The bomb does connect from Mockery. Knock up from Leon one more time. Lake Food zing in here. Maybe looking for a big emerald. It does knock back too. Still alive. Kite hitting us with the tranquility. Lake Food coming out on Big Scoop. Giving him the spell shield. Allure getting webbed up here. No damage at all. Medivh is showing up from the portal. A nice poly bomb here on Kai. She does go down. You see Leon as well CC'd out. Does Lakefu make it out from the top? Mockery trying so hard. He does have to recall. He should only have maybe one or two more Qs. He's out of the fight. Turk showing up a little bit late. Maybe not late enough. He is putting out tons of damage. Big power here on his energy bar. Another polybomb as well. Maybe a polybomb reset. Where that CD is just so dang low. Temporal Flux, level 16 for Medivh. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so Temporal Flux for Moon here, actually able to get off two polybombs in that fight. And we just I, see a one for one on both team supports. <laughs> so you're talking about damage. I pulled up the damage stats, and if uh, oh hold on, Liam Black is gonna try to move away. They're actually gonna turn right back into there and start to engage it back into this team. Lake Food is gonna get the Emerald Wind out. The Turk is trying to make their way out as well. They get the self shielding onto them. Lake Food ends up getting picked off. Turk is not gonna be going down. Throws at the expulsion zone. And it looks to me that Big Scoop might go down here, especially with Turk and yeah, Makari coming in. What I wanted to point out is that the, at the start of this bell tower phase right here, as Moon continues to, to just portal around, <laughs> throws out another polybomb, um, Mockery had 69,000 heroic damage. They're currently, I have it pulled up once again, they're at 88,000 after that, this passive engage. Oh no. <laughs> I think the polybomb on Oh purpose. no. Oh no. Oh my, wait, Mockery. Wait, Alora, yeah, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> wait, Mockery almost just got one shot by Alora. Liam's actually here. They say you can be in us, but we're not going to go down without fighting. Allura is taken out. Leon really close to dying there as well. Tranquility even having to be forced out from Kyberries, but it does look like Turkish Light. Very, very close. Wait, wait, the Emerald Wind of all Emerald Winds. Explosion oh, zone from Turk came in just Aww. in time. Vesper is going to die on the point, doing their best, but that'll be the full cap. And game number one going over to the side of Turkish Delights. GG, well played. The chunk, the chunk uh, is the victory there. Yeah, the, there's the, that's so many health bars, right? I think time and time again, those fights we just saw, really both teams just 
neither one seemed like anyone was going down. It was support for support, right? Maybe range for range. Um, but yeah, a really fun game one.